welcome to another January Cakes tutorial. Today we're gonna do this cake as you see here. So we have our sprinkle buttercream, which is a really fun buttercream to do. I just add sprinkles to it. I'll show you how um, I smooth that out. It is more tricky than just doing smooth buttercream, so it's definitely helpful to watch our previous tutorials on how to do that and perfect that first um, before you dive into sprinkles because it is a bit more tricky. And then I'll show you guys how I do my fondant pearls and put them on the cake like this. And then also, lastly but not least, is our sugar blossoms. So our sugar blossoms are a great add-on to any cake. It is, it's a good way to add sugar flour without the hefty price tag because they are small and easy to do relatively compared to a peony or a rose or something like that. And especially if you wanted to try, if you want to start getting into sugar flowers and are a little bit intimidated, sugar blossoms are definitely the way to go. It kind of eases you into it. So um, we use our sugar blossoms on our celebration cupcakes as you see here. They're really nice decorative add-ons for anything, so definitely fun to learn, and I hope you guys learn a lot. So let's get started. Let's get started, Lila. She's excited. Hey. All right, so now to make our sugar blossoms. What you'll need is some gum paste. This is gum paste I have that's tinted um, a dusty pink color, and then you will need a egg carton. This is what I use to form the blossoms once you make them, so it's really easy to just save an egg carton if you have it on hand. Um, blossom cutter. I can tag this one in the comments below for you guys. Um, a Dresden tool, so we'll be using the thicker side here. And a veining stick. So these are all easy um, flower tools to get. Good things to have on hand if you want to do sugar flowers. Um, I use these tools for everything pretty much and then a rolling pin and also a cell pad so um, the foam side and then the, the tougher side on the one side this is the one you want to get and some cornstarch so to start off I'm going to take our gum paste I've already conditioned it with shortening so you're going to want to do that and then you'll want to roll it out so you can either just roll it out with your rolling pin and eyeball it for thickness, but because I make so many flowers and um, we'll do like 50 blossoms at a time, I like to use my pasta roller. So I have a KitchenAid one at the shop, but this one works just as well. Usually I roll it to a three, I believe, let's see. Okay, so I rolled it to a three. Then take your cutter and then just cut them out and I'll use my Dresden tool to kind of poke them out. All right. Okay, so I have all my flowers cut out. So I kind of just stack them on top of each other. And then you want a Ziploc bag and just throw them in there so they can not dry out super fast while you're working. So I will zoom in on this portion so you guys can see better what I'm doing. All right, so we have our blossom that we cut out here. So I'll put it on the cell as this is on the foam side. And you take the thick end of your Dresden tool and then you're just gonna apply pressure coming right off the petal to thin out the petal so it looks like that. So you're just wanting to thin it out really thin, so don't, you can push really hard here. Then you just do each petal. So this does take some getting used to, the feeling and the angle you want to be pushing it on, so just keep trying. Um, you're just aiming to not, you want to stop right at the edge of the flower or else you're going to build up this ridge. So you want to keep going right over the edge onto the foam. So you could either leave it just like this, or I use the veining tool just to give it some veins and kind of flatten out the frilliness. So it depends on what kind of look you're going for. We do both ways at the shop. This way obviously takes a little bit longer, but. So then you kind of just take it in your hands and pinch together 
and just lay it in your egg carton. Just like that. So you want each one to kind of sit differently in there. You want them to be a little bit different and have different visual interests when you're making them. You can kind of play around with them until they dry and make sure they're drying the way you want them to. And then you just continue on like that. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys how I do our sprinkle buttercream. So I would recommend doing a couple cakes with just smooth buttercream first. Um, the sprinkles add an element of um, difficulty <laughs> when you're smoothing out your buttercream, so you want to get comfortable in doing it just smooth first, and then I'd recommend going ahead and trying the sprinkles, but do what you want. Um, it just might take a little bit longer if you go right into the sprinkles. So we have our cake here. It's all crumb coated and ready to go. I uh, made some pink buttercream, so I just added some soft pink Americolor gel color into it. Um, so I did that. So for the sprinkles, I'm we just use long sprinkles that um, we get at our local bulk barn store. So you can really do whatever you want. Um, just make sure that they're the long skinny kinds. I've never tried sequins or anything like that. I don't think it would work as well, but you could try it. <laughs> um, so I just, I eyeball it. It's probably like a quarter cup of sprinkles. Um, and then you stir it up and then you kind of will see when you stir it up if there's enough in there. It depends how many sprinkles you want in your buttercream. You don't want too much or it's gonna be impossible to smooth. You still want a good amount of buttercream in there to smooth out over the sprinkles. Okay, so that looks good. You can see that here. So then you go ahead and just add it to your cake like you normally would. But this one, I think it's a bit more important to put a thicker layer on before you scrape it off because you really want those sprinkles to have like a home in the buttercream without having to stick out of the cake. And that's how you're going to get the smooth effect. Okay, so I put one layer of buttercream on. I'm just going to go ahead and like smooth it kind of again with a scraper or sorry, with the spatula and add a little bit more. So this is more than you normally do if you're just doing a smooth cake. Um, I find that this kind of helps it go faster and not have to do like a million coats of buttercream to get your cake smooth. So then another trick I do, once it's all covered like this, I'll just leave it sitting for a minute or two and then the coldness of the cake will come through and kind of harden the buttercream a little bit. And I find that makes it easier to smooth out and get those sprinkles in there nice and firm and not sticking out and dragging when you try to smooth your cake. So we'll let it sit for a minute or two and then I'll start smoothing it. Okay, so it's been sitting for about a minute, so I'm just gonna start. So you wanna keep your blade straight and flat against the cake. And this you're doing really slowly. You don't wanna go in and dig in and scrape off too much or you're gonna really drag your sprinkles. And that is the hardest part about this technique is to get the buttercream nice and smooth with the sprinkles in there. I don't know what made me try this one day, but <laughs> it worked and it was it's a cool effect to have on your cake. So you're just going slowly, not pressing too hard, kind of just letting your baker's blade just glide along the top. I'm not really putting any pressure on it. So the goal is to just get buttercream off the cake, not the sprinkles themselves. The sprinkles you're kind of pushing into the buttercream, if that makes sense. Start by taking some off the top now. So this will drag too, so just be prepared. So don't worry if you have dragging sprinkles at this point, it's gonna happen. You're just constantly kind of working at it and smoothing it out. So you can hear, I don't know if you can hear it, but your blade is just kind of scraping along the sprinkles and that's what you want. You don't want them to scrape them up, you just wanna scrape over them. If you're finding you're having a lot of trouble and the sprinkles are scraping up and you're not pushing hard and everything like that, throw it in the fridge with the buttercream on for a minute or two and then try again. It helps when the buttercream's a little bit firmer. <laughs> I was talking to herself a little bit. Okay, so one more. 
And if you're finding that your cake isn't um, straight, like your edges aren't straight, and so you want to maybe push in this side more to get the, the straight 90 degree, don't take off, just add buttercream. So if you're feeling like you're a bit like this and you want to add some up here, do that instead of trying to like pressure it straight because then you're just going to scrape off your sprinkles and getting it smooth is going to be next to impossible. I don't know if that makes sense, but it made sense in my head. <laughs> just better to add on buttercream at this point than try to take it off. It's a lot of smoothing, I, I said that earlier. <laughs> And you want to smooth it enough too so that you can see all your sprinkles in there. So I think this was a good amount of sprinkles. Good. One more. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, which is good in cake design. I would never send out a cake that I personally didn't think was perfect, so. Um, it makes for a lot of late nights, but it's definitely worth it. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm going to throw this cake back in the fridge now and let it firm up, and then I'm going to add the pearls and the blossoms. And I'll show you how I do all of that coming up. So our cake has been chilling in the fridge and um, we're ready to go. So I've taken it out and we're going to do our pearls. So for our pearls, you'll need your white fondant. Again, I use satin ice. I feel like it's the best kind of fondant for details like um, pearls and other things and then also for covering your cake. So satin ice is the way to go. So I take some shortening and I'll knead it in. You always need in shortening to your fondant, um, just to soften it up and getting get it ready to go. All right. So this is my pearl maker. <laughs> it's uh, before I actually knew that you can get one of these. I used to roll it every pearl by hand, so that was really time consuming and really silly on my part. So get this for sure if you're ever going to use pearls. Um, I'll link it below for you. Um, it's pretty easy to find. So I always like going with the middle section. I feel like that's just a nice um, size of pearl. And then I do two rows and then I do the draping on top. So let's do that. So I take off a chunk and then I just roll it into a rope. And just roll it on top and then you just push it down. So you want to push it down, you want to make sure it's really in there. And then I have a um, razor. And then I just cut off the ends and just slide it along the top. Okay, and I'll put some cornstarch down. And then you take your strand and you flip it over. And then you just put pressure on the middle behind it. Make the first pearl come out and then just push as you take it off. There you go. Nice strand of pearls. So it's super simple. I just take some time. There's cakes where I do the whole thing as a whole thing of pearls, and that takes a really long time, but it's really worth it. It's so beautiful. So I like to do, I'd like to make about five strands for this kind of size of cake and the design I'm going to do. It depends how fast you are. You can make each strand at a time and then apply it and make another one and apply it. But I like to just do them all at once get them done, and then I'll add them to the cake all together. All right, so I have all my pearl strands made here. So you don't wanna leave them out too long because they will dry, and then when you try to put them on the cake, they're just gonna crack and break. So work quickly or um, do them one at a time. So if it, this was a fondant cake, I would have to use water to attach the pearls to the cake, but because it's buttercream and it's been sitting out, it is a little sticky. So I don't ever have to use it for buttercream. So then I just place the pearls along the base and just like gently press them on, so just like that. And then I, I'm very careful to not stretch the pearls as I go or misshape them in any way. You wanna keep it exactly as it is so that the pearls, when you do the second roll, will slide right on top and fit exactly. 
if you pull the strand or try to thin it out or something like that, then they're not gonna sit nicely on top of each other and it won't look very good. So you're just kind of placing it. Okay, and then the two here, you kind of just smudge together. And then for the second one, I like to get down to eye level. And I kind of go over top of where I started before, so there's only those two seams. And then you just place the pearl in between the bottom two pearls, so they kind of fit in between. And then you just place them on top. Like I said, you don't stretch them or um, misshape them in any way, because they're perfectly made to fit on top of each other. Okay, see, so they're just placed on, and so you can see that they go in kind of the, ga the gap of the ones below. If you find maybe your pearls aren't sticking to the buttercream, then by all means use some water and just brush it on. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna choose the front of my cake. Let's see. I'll do this here. So then to do the strands, I just kind of place the pearls on top and then let it fall kind of as it normally would. And then I just kind of push them into the cake like that. So then it's more of like a natural kind of drop. Okay. So there's one strand. And then my next strand, same thing, I'll kind of just like place it where I want it and then drop it on top here. push it in but not too hard because you want to misshape the pearls okay so that's our pearls and then the final step for the pearls is the pearl sheen so this is also a mirror color gel color pearl sheen I just have it in a silk container and then you just take your paintbrush and then just paint it onto the pearls so this I think really completes the look it really makes it look like a pearl <laughs> Because of that nice sheen. Okay, so the sheen is all on the cake, and I'm gonna write a plaque to go on top. Okay, so our plaque is done. Happy birthday, Lila, of course. So this is some of the extra sprinkle buttercream I had. And put it onto the back. You can also put this into a piping bag, but I just don't want to waste a piping bag for this, so we'll put it in the center here. Okay. And then I have my blossoms that we made. So for this, I always have some extra buttercream around of the color of the cake. And then I just take our blossom and kind of dip it in the icing. And then just add it onto the cake like that. On a cake like this, I usually use maybe like six to eight blossoms, depending on how it's looking. So again, blossoms are a really nice way to add sugar flowers to a cake. Um, sugar flowers themselves are extremely, extremely pricey. Um, something like a peony or a rose or something like that can start at $50 a stem. So they take a long time and the price reflects that. So these are a good option because it still adds like a really beautiful touch to your cakes, but it's a lot quicker to do, so therefore a lot more affordable. So for my blossoms, I believe to add it to a six inch cake is $10, and then to add it to an eight inch cake is 15, and a 10 inch cake is 20 or something like that. So um, definitely more affordable. And I think it also goes with the our signature cake designs better too. So I like that look for the flower placement. So I'll put these aside. And now the final touch that I like to do for blossoms is I like to etch them in gold. So I have our um, edible gold here and then you just have a small brush and then you just lightly touch the edges of your flowers. Just pieces that you wanna highlight. So if there's like a cool bend in there or something like that, it really picks that up and it's nice to kind of highlight that. Okay. 
And then I like to go in there and add some centers. So just a couple dots in the middle of the flowers. Okay, so there you have it. This is our sprinkled buttercream cake, and then we added some pearls, um, the pearl draping here, and then our sugar blossoms, and a plaque as well. So this is a typical signature cake that would go out of our bakery probably, I mean, a lot of times a week. Um, definitely in one form or the other of this kind of design, it's really popular. Um, sugar blossoms are a great way to add some sugar flowers to your cake without the hefty price tag. So it's definitely a good option to have for those people who want, you know, a really pretty soft feminine look but don't want to spend $50 for a peony or something like that. So it's a good option to have. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. Again, um, I can't share recipes just yet. I definitely will soon for our buttercream and our cakes and cupcakes and all that fun stuff, but we just can't do that quite yet. Um, but keep an eye out for that. And yeah, any other questions you have design-wise, anything, let me know what you'd like to see. Tag me in your, in your cakes. I love seeing what you come up with. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time.